Hey there everyone, and welcome to D&D Doge's Emporium of RPG Horror Story Cringe. In today's episode, we have a tale about a first-time dungeon master getting a message from an irate player. A story about a player that just refuses to learn the rules of Dungeons & Dragons. And much more. But before we get into those, a message from Alice. Thanks, Allie. I hope they do. Now, with that said, let's get right into the cringe. Girl refuses to play the game, but keeps playing? By Reddit user Beef and Potato. This one is still ongoing, and it irks me constantly. For a little over two years now, my friends and I have been playing D&D together. We started way back when I barely knew anything about the game, and I have played with this group in DM for a good long while. He's a good DM, and our players are pretty decent, and since our origins, we've all matured quite a bit in our knowledge of the game. Except for one of us. Let me be clear by saying I don't dislike this person. She's fine to hang out with, and I can get along with most anyone, but she has some glaring annoyances when it comes to playing the game itself. Some of these are subjective, so I'll start with the ones that aren't that big of a deal. First, a lot of her characters are very uninvolved with the game, the story, and even the other players. She doesn't interact with other players much at all, even when specifically spoken to. I try to be welcoming and provide hooks for her to join in conversations, and I go out of my way to ask her character's opinions on something, so she doesn't feel like people are blowing her off. She either won't really respond, or will only give angsty one-liners about why her character doesn't care. Second, many of her characters feel like the same person. Now, I'm going to preface this and say that this is fine, because people should be allowed to play how they want, and not be pressured into making some arbitrary masterpiece of a character. However, this is annoying because the girl who plays these characters talks constantly about how much she loves stories and character developments, yet she refuses to actually make any good characters to play with. They all share the exact same personality traits, with slightly varying backstories. They're unresponsive, uncooperative, vague, unhelpful, and generally removed from every situation that they're part of. I will acknowledge that those are matters of taste, and she is free to play those characters as she wishes. I have no place to tell her the kind of character she should play, but it does get frustrating when she just won't interact with anyone. So now, on to the actual problem. She flat out refuses to actually play the game, or even learn how. I could forgive all of her other shortcomings if she would actually just learn something. It's like she just won't do it. We've been playing with this girl for over a year and a half, and she's looked at her character sheet maybe a total of four times. Whenever she's asked to roll a check, she has to get the DM or her boyfriend to check her sheet for her because she doesn't know her modifiers. She doesn't know any actions or anything she can do in combat or even out of combat. She's constantly told by the other members of our party in a supportive and helpful way. Hey, here's how this mechanic works, so you know what to do in the future. She then forgets it all and won't bother to read her own information. And she's playing a rogue, which is one of the easiest classes to manage. I'm just frustrated. She's so annoyingly contradictory. She says she loves drama and roleplay, but refuses to roleplay. She says she loves diverse characters and stories, but refuses to make any characters other than edgy rogue girl who broods in the corner, drinks, and whines about her past. I would say that she's just as bad as the edgy rogue stereotype, but the edgy rogue knows how to play. Edit. I would also like to say that this isn't a malicious attack on my friend, and that I don't mean her any ill will, but her behavior just frustrates me. TLDR. Girl plays D&D for the characters and stories, but refuses to engage with the characters or stories. Also, doesn't know how to play D&D. While I agree with OP that having a player that doesn't really engage with the story or roleplay can be a bit of a bummer, though it's not really the biggest deal. Hell, in my three-year running campaign, we have a player that doesn't really get into the roleplay much, but we just made it that the character is the silent and stoic type 
and any time they do roleplay, it's usually to a comedic effect. Think Silent Bob. But the key difference here with my campaign is that they actually know how to play and what their character can do. You would think that after two years, that this player would have retained some sort of information on how to do some things mechanically in the game, instead of relying on the others to keep reminding her. Perhaps she just doesn't really care about the game at all, but sees it as an opportunity to hang out with her boyfriend and his friends. Maybe she would be better off playing a tag-along character that doesn't participate in battle or something, but with her not really interacting with the world or the characters either, there may not be a point in that. The best advice I can give is just to talk it out with the group and see what can be changed. Though, what advice would you all give? Let's move on. This is a message I got after one session as a first-time DM by Reddit user Tynamites. We had one session, and he sent this message. I delayed session one by a week and a half due to technical issues with the virtual tabletop I was using, and also internet issues. When we finally got together for a game and had finished session one, I woke up to a bunch of messages. The guy messaged me for like three hours straight in the middle of the night and accused me of ignoring him and not taking him seriously. This was the final message at 2 a.m. after he sent a bunch of other hateful messages. What the F? Are you serious? I'm trying to give you a last chance to get some help on your campaign and to have a conversation. And you are resigned to being whatever this is. Apathetic? Arrogant? Whatever. I don't give a F. Here's some feedback that you need to hear but aren't asking for. You suck at communicating with your players, as evidenced here and in the server. You didn't care what anyone's characters were, and you didn't take the time to collaborate around those characters. Why bother making them special or interesting, or have motivations if they don't matter to your story? Speaking of, why couldn't you prompt any of us that we should give our character a reason to want to join the Citadel? In fact, you went so far as to hand wave that motivation as, for whatever reason, instead. That could have informed the character's decision process. That could have been fun to build up a story around. Imagine the story being that much richer if characters are forced to deal with the ramifications of the Citadel's betrayal. We couldn't do that though, because it's not a story we had any knowledge of before the first session. Collaborative stories being what D&D is all about after all. We didn't come to hear you tell us a story. We came to participate in one, with choices and relevant histories, not that you care. Which leads me to apathy. You come across as lazy and disinterested. You didn't even do prep, didn't name your effing city for F6, and you spent all your time doing something to make Foundry work for like two weeks? No one but you cared about Foundry. We offered to use Avray or Roll20 or just theater of the mind. And the truth is that any of us could have created that first encounter as an improv session. It all could have been done with theater of the mind, and it railroaded everyone to exactly one outcome with no decisions for us to make. And now, I'm trying to patiently have a conversation with you about it, and you don't have the good decency to discuss it like an adult. How effing arrogant. This campaign is most definitely not for me. I'd say good luck, except you already got super lucky with the group of players that you have here, and are absolutely effing wasting their potential. What a disappointment. What an effing shame. I was asleep, not ignoring him. This was my first time DMing, to which everyone was aware of. I almost quit there and then. The things he mentioned were also untrue, such as the name of the city and world and such. He just wasn't paying attention. It was session one, but more like a session point five, just setting up the story and the world while in character, and everyone was aware of this. I had everyone's backstory and everything. During the session, he complained the entire time and was a typical main character type, taking over way too much from the other players. He blocked everyone in the server and dipped before waiting for a reply. But ultimately, Four of us stuck together, and the group is still going strong, nearly a year on. Man, talk about arrogant and unstable. It was well known that OP was going to try to be a dungeon master for the first time, so you think a little leeway would be expected from the players. 
There will be mistakes, and it will be a learning process. But it sounds like most of the things that this player is ranting on about never even happened. And what was he expecting? For OP to stay up until the wee hours of the morning to read his rhetoric? Some people are just insane. Luckily for OP, this dude outed himself, as I can imagine things would have been much worse if that player stayed. And it sounds like everyone else has been having a good time with the campaign. Let's move on. Player kills my character because I unintentionally killed an NPC by poisoning them. By Reddit user Yeet Bui USA. This happened a few hours ago as I write this. So, the cast is me, a druid, Frank, the paladin, Doric, the wizard, Brandon, the rogue, Bronze, the bladesinger, the DM, and an artificer who is not really relevant to the story. So, for some setup, a few sessions in, and I bought a bottle of ranch from Brandon the Rogue. The supposed ranch was eventually found out to be horse semen. Yeah. So, here's the story. Minor spoilers, possibly, for the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. So, our party who had just reached level 6, by this point, reaches a marketplace. I walk around the market and talk to the Goblin Chieftain and ask if they have any holy people nearby. The Goblin Chieftain dismisses me, and I walk away. Earlier in the campaign, me and Doric got a set of rings of shared suffering. When he tried to sell them, I gave them the other ring to help him get them sold off. I then walked away to another goblin and gave them my bottle of ranch and sold it for two copper. The goblin then decides to just eat the whole bottle and then passes out and dies. Keep in mind, this is when I found out that it was a jar of horse semen. All 17 plus goblins then decide to start combat toward me for doing this. I thought, hey, fair enough, maybe I can persuade them to stop. But then the players start combat with me too. When it gets to Doric's turn and in initiative, he casts Summon Lesser Demons and Summers eight Abysmal Chickens, and afterward, a goblin hits my character for half my HP. After that, it was Frank's turn, and he knocks down all of my HP before I even do anything. Later on, the Artificer attempts to heal me back, giving me 1 HP. Frank then decides to impale me with his divine weapon to keep me dead. My character then fails two of his death saves, with one success. And finally, when I get to my final death save, Frank tries to roll it for me. The DM doesn't allow this, thank god. And when I'm about to take my final death save, Frank's character doesn't even let me get a word in, and chops out my character's vocal cords. I also must mention that they're a paladin of Sahanan, a chaotic good deity. So, Reddit, am I the a-hole? What? Why would you even consider the notion that you're at fault here? If anything, all the other players are, not you. This whole group sounds chaotic. Making a jar of ranch turn out to be, uh, let's just say horsey sauce. But then, for a goblin to drink it all and die from it, I don't think that would be fatal. I mean, I've watched Jackass and Fear Factor. Hell, if anything, you would think that a goblin wouldn't even notice. Then for the rest of the party to also start attacking you when the goblins did. I think that the other players are just targeting you, in this case, literally, for some reason or another. I would suggest talking to the group and asking why they did this, and tell them that you didn't really enjoy it. And if they ignore you, just leave and find another group to play with. I think we need a kitty palate cleanser after that story. Ah, that is so much better. Now, let's continue down this river of cringe. Natural 20 equals perfect failure by Reddit user Asterion Del Toro The party was recruited by a wizard to rescue an old friend from a prison ship in space. It was a spelljammer setting. The wizard is capable of opening up a portal to the ship, but has to stay behind to keep the portal open for the return journey. To cut a long story short, the party uses a combination of stealth, bluff, and combat to reach the prisoner and free him. But during the escape, the ship is attacked by space pirates and the scene becomes a war sequence. The prison ship's crew desperately try to repel boarders while the ship shakes with the impact of artillery fire, all with the party caught in the middle. 
defying the odds, the party manages to make it back to where they started, only to find that the ship has cracked in two under the barrage, and the portal is on the other half. They can see the wizard and his laboratory through the portal, but a widening gulf between the two halves of the ship cuts the party off from their escape route. The thief wants to throw a grappling hook, and the DM permits it, but warns that the distance means that the thief will have to make a perfect throw to pull it off. The thief rolls a natural 20, and the DM makes a sour face. The DM then narrates that the thief does, in fact, make the perfect throw, and the grappling hook sails straight through the exact center of the portal, beating the wizard on the head and breaking his concentration. The portal closes, and the party is stuck. They are quickly captured by the boarders and taken prisoner aboard the raiding ship, where the next part of the plot happens. I mean, if you're going to railroad the party, they can at least get a good laugh out of it. Well, that situation certainly does sound comical. I think that DM should have approached it differently if he didn't want them to escape back through the portal. Don't give a player a hope of a chance at succeeding at something unless they actually have a chance to do so. The DM could have just said that the portal was out of reach, even with the grappling hook, and left it at that. Then he wouldn't have the possibility of having a player that feels cheated. Though, what do you think on this one? Moving on. Cheater Can't Stand Not Being the Best Character by Reddit user Surlio Opening note. This was 10 years ago, at a now defunct game store. The Game Master was the man who owned the store, and he had seen me run some games at a local convention and asked if I would be willing to join his game at the store. He had three other players in his group, including a good friend of mine. The setting was called Midnight, and was an offshoot of the 3.5 edition D&D rules. I had an idea to play the lovable, kind of dumb, lunk of a fighter, who was really good at fighting. Only, he ran under Roll for Stats rules, and I rolled fairly average. Nothing above a 16, and nothing below a 10. Most everything else was 11s and 12s. Here is where the problem player, playing a halfling wizard, comes in. He saw my rolls, and started making fun of how useless my character was going to be, but the GM brushed it off. I looked at my stats, and asked if I could shift my 10 to an 8, and my 16 to an 18. I knew it was a stretch, but my argument was that it would fit the dumb lunk concept better, and the GM agreed. The halfling wizard lost his crap. He started calling me a min-maxer and a power gamer, who had no concept of the spirit of the game. Then, my friend looked across the table and states, didn't the GM let you do the same thing? That's different, was the response we got. Things eventually settled down, and we started to play. This is when I noticed Halfling Wizard seemed to have an infinite number of the Grease spell, as well as some other spells, and a familiar that could be anywhere, anytime he chose, all at level 4. The worst thing, though, was that he would roll, snatch the die, and then call out his number, constantly. He always rolled high, even though you couldn't see what he was rolling. So I asked him how many times he could cast Grease a day. I don't have to tell you, was his response. Then he started back on the min-maxer stuff again. Any time he could slip in a jab at me, he would. This is when he started going after whoever I was fighting, and throwing grease under me and the enemy. For four encounters with no rests, he was still slinging grease spells in my direction, causing me to slip, making barbed comments at me, and just being an ass. Finally, I pointed out again how many times he could cast the spell. But then he openly called me a cheater, even though I had managed to do little to nothing this game, and said that it was an innate ability of his character. So, not having fun, I packed up my stuff and left. I thanked the GM for the game and went home. A little over two hours later, my friend who was at the game called me to say that he had quit too. Apparently, after I left, the problem player started insulting me for being a poor sport, a cheater, and the reason that nobody likes him. So the other two put him on blast and questioned his entire character. The game stopped as he danced circles around the hows and whys of what he was doing, but he had three stats at 18. The GM had mostly let it slide up until that point, 
but when it all came into question after I quit, he suddenly was paying attention. Anyways, the good thing is that my friend and I started our own game at his place, and that ran for nearly two years after this happened. Well, first off, I don't think switching up stat totals to slightly better fit a character concept is too big of an ask, and the fact that this player took issue with it even after he was allowed to do the same thing should have been a red flag to the DM. That, and the fact that this player was doing all of that obvious cheating, and it wasn't noticed by the DM, even after the other players brought light to it, this is as much the DM's fault as it is that player. A DM is supposed to manage the game, and while yes, it sucks to have a player like that, it is really on the DM to call that sort of stuff out. But at least it sounds like some good came out of it with OP and their friends starting a long-running campaign. But that is all we have for today. As always, I appreciate all of you, and may your games remain horror story free. Until next time.